so now we'll start with the new chapter that is sets now what do you mean by sets sets is actually the well defined collection of objects well defined collection of objects like suppose if you take any example well defined collection of objects means like if you take any example if if you say uh, collection of all indian players of a cricket team like if we say collection of all indian players of cricket team collection of all indian players of cricket team at present so if we talk about this thing then definitely it is a well defined collection of objects because we can define what all indian players are there in the cricket team so we can define this part so therefore it is a collection of all indian players of uh, cricket team at present is a well defined collection of so we can define it and we can uh, say the collection of all indian players who are pl playing at present is a well defined collection of objects but if we say that the a collection of all good indian players of a cricket team like if we say collection of all good indian players of cricket team then we cannot define this part because good indian players is a very vague statement as we cannot say um, because the, if you are talking about the good indian player then definition of good is different for all so there is no particular definition for good indian players for for a uh, for all all of us so accordingly the good indian players is a very vague statement so we cannot uh, define the good indian players in the set so accordingly it is not a well defined collection of objects so well defined collection of objects means we can easily say what all objects should be there in the set so that that what do you mean by the well defined collection of objects like if we say the set of all natural numbers less than 100 so definitely it is a well defined collection of objects and we can easily uh, deter determine what all objects should be there in that sets and also like if we say collection of all all uh, in positive integers less than 100 or less than 200 then also it is a well defined collection of objects so so set means it is a, should it should be a well defined collection of objects that we can easily define and we can easily say what all objects should be there in the set so this is what do you mean by set now set can be represented in two ways the first way of re representing the set is the roster method roster method so roster method is the one way of defining a set or representing a set like if we say a collection of all vowels in an english alphabet so collection of all vowels in an english alphabet alphabet is a well defined collection of objects and we can represent that we can represent that in the roster method as by using the curly braces we can represent it as a e i o u and close and we have closed the curly bracket so if we need to represent the objects well defined objects in the roster method we can represent it using the curly bracket and the objects are separated by commas so as the objects are separated by commas and they are uh, they are within the curly braces so this is the method of representing the collection of objects in the roster method like in the same way if we need to define the collection of all natural numbers then also we can define it as in the form of roster method as 1 comma 2 comma 3 and so on so there are many natural natural numbers so definitely we cannot write all natural numbers so we have represented by dotted line and whatever terms we have written in the curly braces we have separated them with the commas so in this way we can represent the well defined collection of objects in the roster method and also like if we say we need to write out the collection of objects or collection of the no, prime numbers less than let's say 20 so if we need to write collection of prime numbers less than 20 then we can write it as we can write it in the again in the curly braces as uh, what all prime numbers are there 2 comma 3 comma 5 and, uh, and then 7 then 11 then 13 and then 19 17 19 so all these are the prime numbers less than 20 so we can write all these prime numbers within that curly braces separated by commas so these are all are different prime numbers separated by commas these are representing that they are different prime number and they are within the curly braces and there are definitely the uh, countable number of prime numbers less than 20 so that, that, that's why we have written all the prime numbers in the bracket but if there are if we need to write it like 
uh, write all the prime numbers less than 100 then definitely there are many prime numbers we cannot write all the prime numbers less than 100 so we can just represent them using the dotted line also so this is the method of writing the uh, writing the collection of well defined collection of objects that is known as set in using the roster method so in the roster method the terms are separated by commas and they are within the curly braces opening and close curly braces so in this way we can represent the objects in the roster method well defined objects in the roster method that is set and the next method of representing the objects well defined collection of objects that is uh, all the objects in the set is set builder method so in the set builder method we cannot write all the objects we only define those objects in the within the bracket within the curly braces we only define the objects like suppose if we need to write the set of uh, set of all uh, set of all all num all perfect square numbers so if we need to write it like this in, so in the roster method if we need to represent that we can write it as set of all perfect square numbers as 0 1 4 9 16 and so on this is the set of all perfect square numbers and this we have represented using roster method but if we need to represent this in the into the set builder method then how we can do it is we can write this a as bracket x square we can write it as and we can define this x what x can be so we can define x as x belongs to z or x belongs to z means x belongs to integers or if we need to re uh, represent it we can also represent it as x belongs to natural number so we can write it like this also so this is representing that x belongs to natural number and the object in this set should be of x square that is square of all natural numbers so in this way we can represent it using set builder method so this is the roster method of representing the set and this is the set builder method so in the set builder method if we only need to define them what all objects should be there we only need to define those objects and we can represent it using some variable like here we, we have represented this all natural number using this variable x so it, here it, we have used x square and what x can be we have we have defined here that is x belongs to natural number so in this way we can define the uh, objects well defined collection of objects of the set in the set builder method we don't, don't need to we don't need to write all the objects we only need to define those objects within the curly braces so this is the way of representing the objects in the set builder method like if you take any other example like if, uh, let's say if the objects are 1 1 by 4 1 by 9 then 1 by 16 and so on so if we need to represent this in this uh, represent this into let's say set builder method then how we can represent this b as a set builder method so b is equal to all the b is actually representing 1 1 by 4 1 by 9 1 by 16 so if we say this 4 9 16 all are net all are squares of natural number and we have taken the reciprocal of the squares of natural numbers so definitely we can represent it at it as let's say 1 by n square and where n belongs to let's say natural number so we can represent it this or all these objects in the set builder method by this way so 1 by n square that is 1 by 1 square 1 by 4 square 1 by 9 square then 1 by 16 square so in this way we can represent it so it will be 1 by n square where n belongs to natural number so in this way we can represent the objects in the set builder method so these are two two ways of representing the objects well defined collection of objects in the uh, into the in the sets so these are two ways of representing it for, for first method is roster method and the second is set builder method so now uh, now we'll see some different types of sets so the first type of set is empty set first type of set is empty set so empty set means the set which does not does not have any of the element or it is it is a void set void set means it does not have any element in it so it so this can be represented as like this only using the curly braces with the blank with no element in within the curly braces this with no element in the curly braces it is it is representing the empty set because there is no element in the set so then that's why it is known as an empty set or it can also be represented using this phi phi is representing the empty set so this is a way of representing the empty set like if you take any example of this empty set then uh, let's write so let's write, uh, let's write the example first so example is right x uh, belongs to natural number and this x will be within 
greater than 5 and less than 6. It means we need to uh, write all the elements of this set and all the elements should be natural numbers because x belongs to natural number and that natural number should lie between 5 and 6. So definitely answer of this answer of this will be the blank set or the empty set. Why? Because uh, there is no natural number between 5 and 6. So we cannot take x uh, uh, any of the value between 5 and 6 because there is no natural number between 5 and 6. So we can represent it as using the void set or the empty set. So if there is no element in so whatever condition is given to us uh, for the set if that condition is not fulfilling we can represent it at, at as using the empty set or the void set. So void set is representing that, uh, that the set does not contain any of the values. So empty set means it, it should not have any values in it or it should not have any elements in it. So that is empty set. And next so now the next type of set is singleton set. And this singleton set representing means as the name suggests singleton set means set which is having the only one element. So if the set is having only one element or the single element it is known as the singleton set. So like if we take any example like suppose if, uh, if we take any set like this. So this is actually the singleton set because it is having only the one element that is A. So this is the example of this singleton element. Now we will see one more example of this. So let's write down the example first. So the example is write the set x where x belongs to natural number and also x square is equal to 9. So we need to write the element of this set in which the x is a natural number x square is equal to 9. So if x square is equal to 9 then x should be either plus minus 3. So x should be either plus 3 or minus 3. But it is given that x should be a natural number also. So x, 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 x should be a natural number Therefore, we can write it as, we, uh, we can write in the curly braces only one element that is 3. Because x can be either plus 3 or minus 3. But if x is a natural number, then x can be only plus 3. So, we, so this it means that this set contains only one element that is 3. So, therefore, this set is actually a singleton set. Now, the third type of set is finite set. So, finite set means the set which contains the finite number of elements or the countable elements. like the elements which the set have set has should be countable or we can easily count them so those type of sets are known as the finite sets like suppose if we, if, we, if i ask you to write down the all prime numbers less than 20 then we have seen this example all prime numbers less than 20 so these are the all prime numbers less than 20 so we can easily count them that what all prime numbers are there less than 20. So we can easily count them. So therefore this set is actually the finite set because the number of elements of these sets are countable. Or if I ask you to say let write down all the natural numbers less than 100. So it means these are these all our elements are the countable elements so we can easily count them. So definitely this this becomes the finite set. So finite set means the sets which contains the countable number of elements or the elements which we, which we can easily count. So those sets are the finite sets. Now we will see the infinite set. Infinite set means the set which contains the infinite number of elements means which in the elements which cannot be counted. Like if we say a uh, set, set of all natural numbers. So if we say the set of all natural numbers, so definitely there are infinite number of natural numbers and we cannot count them. So definitely that set will become the infinite set. Like if I ask you to write that infinite set, so it will be like this. 4 and so on, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So this is the infinite set because the number of elements of this set cannot be countable. As it is said that n, n is the uh, set uh, which contains x and x belongs to natural number. So this is the set. So x is said to be as a natural number. x is said to be as a natural number and there are infinite number of natural numbers between, uh, there are infinite number of natural numbers. So we cannot count them so therefore it is the infinite set. So infinite set is the set which contains the infinite number of elements. Like if I also ask you to say a set of all, uh, let's say set of all points in a circle. So if I say let's set of all points in a circle, so definitely there are infinite number of points in a circle, within the circle. So we cannot count them, so definitely it is a infinite set. So infinite set is the set which contains the infinite number of elements.